Well, look, we're up in 1 John chapter 3. We're going to begin at verse 10 in our study. And here in this paragraph from, from verses 10 through 15, we see the imperative of love. Now, if you're like me, imperative is, some, is a word that's not you don't hear a lot, you know. But a synonym for imperative is required, okay? The requirement of love, the necessity. It, it's not either or, it's yes. You understand? It's what it means, the imperative of love. And so here in this passage, the Apostle John writing to this church and and, uh, you know, he, he, he settled around Ephesus after the, after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. He took Mary with him to Ephesus. Uh, the Turkish name, I think, is Ismir. Ismir. It's the third largest city in Turkey. Istanbul, Ankara, the uh, capital, and Ismir. It's down kind of southwest Turkey on the Mediterranean. Just off of there is the Isle of Patmos, you know. Too far to swim, but it's out there. And, of course, we know John done a little jail time out there. And uh, so uh, he's writing to this church, and, and, and very, it could be that one of the seven churches there in the circuit in Turkey, uh, in uh, Asia Minor, the, the Bible calls it, um, and... Uh, and Tolia, I believe, is the old name for that area. And so uh, he very well could be right into Ephesus, you know, or Smyrna or Philadelphia, or, or it could be all of them. It doesn't matter. He's writing to believers, a congregation of believers. That's what we are. You see, that's where this concept comes from. It comes from the Lord. Uh, Israel gave us the Messiah, and Asia Minor and, Tur and Greece... Turkey and Greece gave us the local church. You understand? That's where it really took off church planning, missionary work. Uh, Paul and Barnabas and Silas and John Mark. Uh, yes, Mark's first name is John. John Mark. And, uh, uh, and, and, and on and on and on. And, of course, the, the, uh, it went uh, westward across through Europe, although Thomas did take it to India. Well, okay, so the imperative of love, verse 10, he says, in this, in this. Now remember, those who were born again, you're in your spirit man, you're sealed, you're perfect, you're holy. The mark of God is on you. Devil can't penetrate that, but he, can, he, he still has access to the soul, intellect, emotion, will. And, of course, the battlefield is the mind, as, as someone wrote a famous book, uh, Joyce. Joyce Meyer. <laughs> I'm having some of them. Never mind what kind of moments they are. Joyce Meyer wrote a book years ago, The Battlefield of the Mind, and, boy, I tell you, that it is right on. That, I mean, that is true. That's where the battle is, right here, it, it, between your, behind your eyes, between your ears. That's, that's where the battle is. And so he, sa he says, remember, you, you're born of God. Therefore, you, in your spirit, man, you don't sin. Your sin comes out from your soulishness, your soul, and you flesh it out. Now, you can commit sin in your mind and not flesh it out. Remember what Jesus said? You know, hey, boys, you, you say you've not been ornery and chasing skirts. Well, if you look at a woman to lust after her, it's the same as doing that other thing. You see what I mean? So the devil wants access. He wants access to our soul, our intellect, our emotion, and our will. And so he says, in this, in this fact that you're saved, born again, filled with the Spirit, sealed with the Spirit, you are pure and holy in your spirit, man. That's the part of you that's born again. In this, little children, in this, the children of God, and the children of the devil are manifest. This is how you tell them apart. Can I tell you, a lot of lost people are nice people. There's a lot of not lost people that are nice. Enjoyable. 
kind and considerate. That's not what differentiates a Christian from a lost person. He says, he says, this is it. Whoever does not practice righteousness, whoever doesn't practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So, practicing righteousness, practicing godliness, practicing uh, what God says, how, how, to, how, how we're to act and interact, People ask me, what is, what's God's like? what is God like? I mean, tell me about Him, His personality. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. That is how God is. The fruit of the Spirit. There, those nine fruit listed there. And, uh, and you know, when the Scripture was originally written in the Greek, they didn't have gr- grammatical marks. Did you know that? They didn't have periods. They didn't have quotations and commas and all that. So... When, they were, when you're translating into another language, you have to think, you know, in the context, you have to say, well, now, uh, comma, 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 you know, like those nine fruit of the Spirit. But I often thought, you know, in Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And I think probably there should have been a, The two dot thing. Colon. Colon. And out of love comes those other eight. You see? I've always wondered about that. That's one of the questions I'm going to ask when I get to heaven. You see? Because out of love comes, you know, joy, peace, you know, and and (laughs) long-suffering. Oh, boy, I'm going to suffer long. And self-control, you know. I went to send money to the missionaries today, you know, uh, through uh, MoneyGram down at, down at uh, uh, Walmart. And so I go in and, and uh, you know, I have my list and their names and where to send it, you know. And I, and I, and I, I, uh, I uh, oh, yeah. And I pull out my, I, you got to have photo ID, you know. And, and uh, I said, now, now be careful because I, I cracked this thing and I got to run over DMV and get a new one. She says, well, I'm sorry, we can't do the transaction. Mm-hmm. Self-control, self-control. <laughs> I said, well, this is the one I've been giving you every month for how many years now? See? And I said, it's just cracked. I mean, it's not even, it's still, it's still attached together. She said, no, if it's cracked, it is no longer valid. Self-control, self-control. I said, okay, thank you. And I just turned around, didn't say French words or anything. <laughs> and I got, went out and I went over and got my car and drove over to the DMV. Every seat in the house was full. And uh, so, but there was nobody in the to be served next line, you know. You know, so I, I go, go up to the little sign. She comes up and she says, uh, I told her what happened. She says, well... You do know we don't make them here anymore. (laughs) Self-control, self-control, self-control. I said, oh, really? He says, now we can take care of everything here and get your picture made. It'll come in in the mail in seven to ten days. She says, this is no longer a valid license, but I'll give you a blank, a paper. Now, this will act as your photo ID, but it is not a valid driver's license any longer. I said, okay, self-control, self-control, self-control. When did they change all this? She says, well, we got a new governor. (laughs) 
Oh, yeah, I didn't vote for that joker. Um, anyway, uh, so I'll have to call some people and tell them that make do. For the, or, or I might just hoodwink someone to go down and do it because I forget how many hundreds of kids we feed at orphanages. I, I don't know. She never even, I never even thought of that. Oh, another thing I've learned. Uh, starting sometime, you're going to have to do, get a real ID. These don't qualify as real ones. So you have to bring in your birth certificate and your passport to get your driver's license. And the reason you got to do that, we don't have a wall on the southern border. Amen. So what if you don't have a passport? Well, you're going to go you're going to get one. Everyone's going to have to have one. So anyway, isn't that fun? In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. And then he says in verse 11, For this is the message. This is the message you heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. Amen. It's all about love. It's all about love. It all centers around that. I uh, had a fellow tried to uh, start a conversation with me. And he was saying, you know, uh, he, 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 he saw something that someone said. It wasn't me. Someone said something, you know, and he took issue with it. And what are your credentials? I thought, credentials? Like if you don't have a, a, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a doctorate in whatever the subject is, you really don't have a right to speak out because what you say is probably ignorance. That's, that was his line of thinking. And I, uh, you know, I just couldn't let that go. <laughs> Self-control, though. And I said... I said, uh, friend, you don't measure spiritual maturity based upon having a Ph.D. at the end of your name. You measure spiritual maturity by obedience. Do you obey the Word of God? Do you come under the authority of the Word of God? And then I proceeded, proceeded to let him know that my father only had an eighth grade education, but he taught me more about the Bible than I ever learned in seminary. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Don't let any, somebody say, well, you don't have a degree in